Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, NASA is still learning from Orion's first flight. Pilots Union urges safe integration of UAVs into the airspace system. Marion Blakely joins Rolls-Royce North America. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited, I'm Ashley Hale. NASA's Orion spacecraft continues on the agency's journey to Mars as engineers analyze data from the spacecraft's December flight test and make progress developing and building the spacecraft for its first mission atop NASA Space Launch System heavy lift rocket. By the end of the year, engineers hope to have primary structure for Orion's next mission to NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida for processing. Meanwhile, every piece of data in each element of the spacecraft flown in the December test is being analyzed and compared to pre-flight models to improve Orion's design. Mark Geyer, NASA's Orion program manager, said in part, quote, Orion's flight test was a big success and what we learned is informing how we design, develop, and build future Orions that will help us pioneer deep space destinations, end quote. NASA reported that Orion's flight test yielded millions of elements of data, every piece of which is providing unique insight into how to improve the spacecraft's design so that it can safely send astronauts on their way to Mars and return them home. The head of the Airline Pilots Association wrote in a recent editorial for USA Today that pilots see UAVs as a potential danger to the safety of airliners in the U.S. Captain Tin Canole wrote that while ALPA is not opposed to UAVs, the organization is for their safe integration into the national airspace system. He says that unmanned systems, quote, must meet the same high level of safety and security standards as other airspace users, regardless of whether they are used by hobbyists or for commercial purposes, end quote. Canole cited other issues such as UAV operators, meaning minimum training and qualification requirements, and the ability for airline collision avoidance displays and air traffic controllers to be able to see a UAS on their electronic displays. He concludes by saying that the nation needs to make wise decisions based on safety as the integration process proceeds. After the break, Marion Blakely to lead Rolls-Royce North America. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, send us an email to news-spy at aero-news.net. Marion C. Blakey has been appointed to become President and Chief Executive Officer of Rolls-Royce North America and Chair of the Rolls-Royce North America Board of Directors, replacing James M. Guyette, who will be retiring in May. Ms. Blakey will leave her position as President and Chief Executive Officer of the Aerospace Industry Association, where she has served nearly eight years. Some of Ms. Blakey's many successes over her celebrated career include serving a five-year term as Administrator of the Federal Aviation Administration. From 2001 to 2002, Ms. Blakey served as Chairman of the National Transportation Safety Board. At the NTSB, she led a number of accident investigations, improved the board's accident reporting process, and strengthened its advocacy and outreach programs to promote safer travel throughout all modes of transportation. Ms. Blakey is a true leader in the affairs of aviation and aerospace, and we at ANN congratulate her on her new position with Rolls-Royce North America. 
With some 2000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, it's fun to look back and enjoy the places we've seen, the pilots we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. The airplane is beautiful to watch flying. Uh, we did a good uh, flyby at the opening of the show and everyone was impressed. But the real beauty of the airplane is on the inside. So it's great for us to spend a week here. We expect around 35,000 people to go through the airplane. The Orbis Flying Eye Hospital has been in operation for over 30 years. In this video, you'll get background information regarding the airplane and their mission. It's a story of commitment and dedication. Search the Orbis Flying Eye Hospital on Aero TV's news channel. After these messages, Prince Harry no longer flying combat missions. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro standby instrument, TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Britain's Prince Harry will remain in the Army, but will no longer fly Apache helicopters in combat. He will also continue working with wounded servicemen and women to recover both physically and mentally from their war injuries. Pilatus Business Aircraft has delivered its 1300th single-engine turboprop PC-12 to a California-based airline. The operator, Surf Air, is the nation's first private travel club offering unlimited monthly flights. The airline has 15 PC-12 NG aircraft on order. Piper Aircraft recently delivered four new Archer training aircraft equipped with Garmin G500 avionics to the Malaysian Flying Academy. These deliveries are part of Malaysian Flying Academy's long-term plan to upgrade their exclusive Piper fleet. Bidding starts this Friday for the historic Flying Vacation Spot Chalet Suzanne, which is located in Central Florida. Its lodging, restaurant, and airstrip are only a few of the features at this choice location. It's advertised as a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's move on to the rest of the news. Burt Rutan, the visionary aircraft designer whose innovations made history and changed the aviation world, will be back at EAA AirVenture Oshkosh in 2015 to commemorate the 40th anniversary of his iconic Very Easy Aircraft. His Very Easy Aircraft first flew in May 1975, with the prototype causing a sensation at that year's EAA Oshkosh Fly-In. That canard design evolved into other Rutan aircraft innovations, such as the Long Easy that are still being built today. More than 1,000 airplanes based on his designs are now flying in the United States alone. His Very Easy was not only unique in design and aerodynamics, it spread recognition of a new way to construct home-built airplanes. In honor of the Very Easy anniversary, EAA is inviting all Rutan and Canard aircraft owners to come to Oshkosh and participate in the festivities. EAA will provide more details on specific events and dates as they're finalized. 
Well, that's our program for Wednesday, February 25th. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday. Please join us in a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.